Hi folks, welcome to the channel. In this video we're going to take a look at Commarker's new Omni X laser engraver. Some of you might remember that I featured their Omni 1 a few months ago, which is a UV laser that uses high energy photons in a short wavelength in a process called photolytic degradation, also known as cold marking, to break down chemical bonds directly and limit thermal stress, making it ideal for marking and engraving heat sensitive components and materials like electronics, glass, fabric, thin plastics, and even food. This new Omni X is an upgraded version of the Omni One, which comes with a fully laser shielded enclosure with more safety features and exhaust control, autofocus, and it's compatible with accessories like their roller and chuck rotaries, and their new slide extension to expand the work area. But it can also 3D engrave models inside of crystal blocks with the help of Commarker's new laser engraving software that they launched with this machine, which we're going to jump right into here after the assembly, which takes roughly 15 to 20 minutes. After turning the machine on, you'll notice that it is somewhat loud, which is a bit of a turn off for me, but it's not the end of the world. I did turn the volume down for the video though. I prefer to use the provided lift for engraving to make vocal adjustments easier and to avoid marking up the base of the machine. Notice the red dot. Your material needs to be placed under it so the machine can autofocus to its surface. The drivers and software installed onto my old PC without any problems. As some of you might notice, it's a familiar layout to some other laser engraving software that I've featured on this channel which I actually appreciate because it's intuitive and user friendly without compromising capability and I don't have to relearn how to use everything. I'm using an early version of this software which might not be exactly the same as what's provided with your machine, but you can see that it has everything that you need for creating custom projects on the left side of the page and on the right you can select between different modes such as flat surface, rotary and slide extension. At the top you can select between different devices and adjust settings like the z-axis settings, which I checked to make sure they match the settings that Commarker provided. To set up for 3D engraving crystal blocks, I clicked the 3D glass button in the bottom left of the page, then I clicked import in the top right of the page to import a 3D model. The yellow dimension lines represent the perimeter of the crystal block, which should be adjusted to match the size of the crystal block being engraved. I then scaled the model down to fit within the dimension lines, with a few millimeters to spare on either side. Next, I made sure the dwell time, frequency, and pulse settings were correct before clicking the autofocus button. Since we're engraving inside of crystals in this video, we need to focus to the surface of the work platform instead of the surface of the crystal block. The focus can also be adjusted manually with the up and down buttons on the machine and using a ruler to measure the focal distance to the bottom of the laser module. With the focus set, I place the crystal on the table and click the preview button in the software to outline the model so that the crystal can be positioned accordingly before engraving. Since it is a UV laser, this preview paddle is needed to see the outline on some materials. This turned out really nice for a first attempt. It looks like super thin silk trapped in resin, and I don't see any problems with it at all. That's pretty impressive. Commarker provided a few crystals with the kit, so I decided to try a few more models.
In the previous Omni 1 video, I experimented with marking photos on glass. This time, I want to try marking photos inside the glass. The first attempt is to show what it looks like marked on the surface, and the second will be marked inside the glass. To do that, I lowered the focal point to roughly 3mm below the surface of the 6mm thick glass sheet. I did not prepare any of the photos before importing, I just marked them as they were uploaded to my PC. It's a good idea to keep scrap material on hand for making adjustments because photos can be a little tricky to get right sometimes. The settings that I used were 846 dots per inch, half tone negative image mode, 40 kHz for frequency, 1 nanosecond for pulse width, 200 microseconds for dwell time, and one pass. The photos are a little too bright and could use some contrast adjustments, but both examples look good. I think the photo inside the glass turned out better though. It's a little darker, but you can see a lot more detail compared to the frosted look of the surface marking. Satisfied with that, I tried another photo to test consistency before swapping the 70mm lens for a 150mm lens to increase the work area and mark a city map. These all turned out really nice. Of course, as I demonstrated with the Omni 1, this machine can work a wide variety of materials both heat sensitive and not, from cutting and 3D engraving glass reliefs, to color marking and cutting metals, to marking and engraving food. This machine can do almost everything that fiber, diode, and CO2 lasers with twice the power can do, with a lot less risk of damaging materials in the process. So that's it for this video folks. For now, I'm impressed with this machine. I love that it has a full enclosure for safety and to help control messes, and the autofocus saves time manually micro-adjusting. But I can't believe how easy it was to do the 3D engraving. I don't think Lightburn has this capability yet, but CallMarker software seems to work great with this machine. I haven't had any issues yet, but to be clear, I haven't had a chance to test every feature or use it with their other machines, so I can't definitively say there are absolutely no issues with it. Again, I have to repeat that I'm not a fan of how loud the machine is. It's not quite as bad as running a power tool like a table saw or a router machine, but it's loud enough. I suppose that's to be expected in a machine shop, but don't expect to set this up in your home and not annoy someone. Aside from that, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll take another look at it in a follow-up video where I show the chuck rotary and slide extension accessories. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.